we we have a few participants that we're going to be on, but they're not able to make it because you know it's the middle of the day. I get that. We're all crazy busy. So we're recording this. Um, and we'll send out a recording if you need to recall anything. Um, and we're gonna be sending out to others as well. So we will get things going and get you back to your day. Welcome to the Master Your Sphere class. I am Kyle Reedstrom. The only assignment you have from today is to follow me on social media because I because I like new friends and I always am putting out new content on real estate and and, and resources and what have you. So um, I'm going to get things started. Master your sphere. We are here to focus on creating business from our sphere of influence. This is something that I've been able to lean into in my career instead of paying for leads, creating organic leads that are, hey, remember this free, zero dollars, other than maybe coffees or happy hours or lunches or whatever. Um, but mastering your sphere is something that I've focused a ton on to create a business that's reliable, that I can count on, that keeps leads and referrals coming through the door over and over again for my business so I don't have to play the, the roller coaster game, which we'll get into more. So um, let's kick it off. I am Kyle Reedstrom. This is me. This is my, my beautiful picture, uh, just so you know who's yapping at you today. Um, and we'll get into a little bit of my history. But first, I am part of a national broker called Real Broker. This is actually a presentation I give at Real at, as part of Real Academy. Uh, Real is a publicly traded company. I have the little stock ticker there. Um, and the biggest reason I'm a part of Real, we made this move back in August, was to be a part of a company where I can gain ownership through stock options. I can gain a passive income revenue stream through um, building building my team and my network in, in Real. And then uh, really, it's a, it's, it's a movement towards the future to be part of a technology-based brokerage. And that's kind of, I want to explain that because Real is unfamiliar. It's only 4,500 agents nationwide right now. So um, that is the broker we're a part of, that I'm a part of. Today's agenda, who's going to be talking at you? I'm going to give you a little rundown of who I am. Um, we're going to be going over never buying a lead again, because this is such a trap, I think, for a lot of real estate people is buying leads versus generating leads. Um, curing listing agent and buyer agent poverty, a little joke there, but I'll get into it. And no more roller coaster with our business. No more, hey, we, we did really good. We worked really hard. We made a bunch of sales. Now we're focused on getting those sales closed. And then we forget to keep the, the revolving door going. Um, and so we'll get into mastering your sphere, part one, two, and three. And then some quotes that I love that pertain to this topic matter, some resources, and we'll get you back into the into the grind. So that sound that sound fair, Kim? Yes, yeah, sounds good. Kim, just real quick for perspective, how, how long have you been in uh, the real estate world? Um, are you part of a team? Kind of what's your what's your quick uh, background? Um, I've been in real estate almost a year, It'd be a year in August. Um and I did just join a team with my brokerage a couple months ago. Okay. Um, I've had to step away from real estate for a little bit due to some personal matters, but I'm um, just trying to get back into it uh, recently. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining. Amy, we, we just got you to join. We're kind of kicking things off. Amy, can you hear everything okay? I can hear you just fine. I'm not going on video because I have COVID. <laughs> okay. No, no problem. Amy, just where are you at and kind of where are you at in, in real estate? I'm in the Boston market okay. and I am a one year in realtor. Gotcha. Great. Well, awesome gang. This is, this is a, you know, I've been in, I'll get into the introduction a little bit, but so awesome for you early in your real estate career to start creating a sustainable business with sphere production, referrals, lead generation. So we'll get into all of that, kind of the system we use. Um, and you haven't missed much yet. I'm just about to get into my introduction. So hey. Kyle, this is me. This is my engineering picture when I graduated from North Dakota State University in Fargo, North Dakota. Again, I got my civil engineering degree, worked as a civil engineer for two years got pretty frustrated in it. And where did I find myself? Hey, I was getting into real estate investing and uh, into real estate agency. So in 2015, I jumped in full time with an agency called Hatch Realty. This is my beautiful business, first ever business card. And I always joke that they made me take a picture on a cloudy day against a brick wall after winter in like April 
So, I mean, you can't even make up how pasty white I was in this picture, but hey, you got to start somewhere. So this was my beginnings. I started as just kind of a help to other team uh, producers on our team. Um, by 2018, I was the top sales guy at Hatch Realty, which is one of the bigger brokers in Fargo. Got my broker's license. I was leading teams at that time. And this was around the time when I was getting all the leads that Hatch had inbound leads at Hatch as part of my team, which is pretty nice gig. I just kind of sat there, answered texts and emails, getting appointments set for me. And I realized very quickly that if I wanted a business I could count on, that I could rely on, that I could, that I could create, I needed to create the skill and the systems to have leads coming that I'm generating, not just the company, not just advertising dollars, the, the work that I'm doing to create business in my world. Um, and so this is where I really dove deep into uh, sphere lead generation, creating business from my own sphere of influence. Fast forward seven years, um, I've done over 600 transactions in these seven years, over 100 million in volume. Oops. Um, and last year, I did about 87 sphere deals, sphere transactions myself. And so that was just business from people in my networks that are coming to me, past working my past clients, referrals, um, you know, all of that coming in for listings and buys, and then a lot of investors too. Um, and so that's been, that was kind of last year. And so today, this is my team. My beautiful wife there is on my the left of me on the screen. Uh, that's my wife, Haley. And we have Austin and Jory there. And Jake, who is on the call here, is part of our team as well, but he just joined and he's not in the, the picture yet. Soon, Jake, very soon. Um, so this is our small team, Midwest Invest Realty Group, brokered by Real. Um, again, we are completely sphere generation. Uh, team. We just do the business that we procure. We're not paying for leads. We're just hunting for leads and creating systems to continue to have leads come um, to us. And our goal is about 133 this year. So we're going to continue to keep knocking on that goal. So my beautiful family, just so you guys know why we all have to have a why we do it all, right? There's my wife, my little daughter, Rosie. We just had a little baby boy, Wesley, that's in the top corner there. And I have two pups. Again, we talk a lot about why we do this business. Um, I don't think, maybe for some people, but I don't think it's everyone's goal to be a real estate agent for the rest of their life and die as a real estate agent. I think the goal is for most people is to have a flexible, autonomous source of income that's, that you enjoy that can eventually create some sustainability and income for you or your family or supplement your lifestyle, right? We're doing it for our lifestyle. We're doing it for others. And so we talk a lot about that on our team. Why are we creating transactions? Why are we doing business? Why are we collecting commission? And a lot of our answers is so we can invest it, so we can save it, so we can spend wisely, so we can create sustainable lifestyle for us and our family and then others. And what, what better reason, right? So that's definitely a big focus, my family pick there. And as a side note, our team, as we're appropriately named Midwest Invest Realty Group, we love real estate investing. I remember being at a conference and the speaker had 20,000 people in the crowd. And he said, how many people, how many of you guys uh, are real estate agents? And everybody went, you know, it was a real estate agent conference, but everybody went, yeah, and everybody raised their hands and huge, huge cheers. And then he count. He he he. he uh, next, he said, "How many of you guys are guys and gals are real estate investors?" And little hands like popped up, and the cheers weren't as loud. And he said to everybody, "You need to buy what you're selling. You need to invest in what you're selling." And so, so many. Uh, I have to say this. So many people. My vision and then visions of our team members is not only to sell real estate and help clients and serve your people, buy and sell, it's, it's to invest in this amazing wealth building tool called real estate. Um, and especially for Kim, you, you and Amy, uh, Kim and Amy here, you guys early in your careers, maybe you're already investors, but 
if you, uh, as you start and get into this world and, and meet people that are doing this, like I really encourage people to be diligent in, in investing alongside uh, their sales career. So for what it's worth there. So let's get into it, gang. Never buying a lead again. Okay. Um, Amy and Kim, you might indulge me here. Does your team, the teams that you're on, are they uh, are they buying leads? Are they kind of setting appointments for people? How does that work in your world? We do like Op City, Rocket Homes kind of thing. Um, okay. You know, and it's not all of them. They really try and encourage us to go for our spear first. Yes. And, you know, that's basically, you know, the motto is like, go for your spear as much as you can. Go for what's around you for free. And then they have leads that we could pick up and we have to give a big percentage of that if we got gotcha. you with them. Okay. Perfect. Thank you for sharing, Amy. Kim? Um, yeah, kind of the same thing. Um, just try to work our SOI and add um, add people every week if we can. Uh, they don't provide leads for us, um, but my broker will. If she gets some leads, she'll kind of hand them out to the agents on her team and Kind of gives a few here and there, but it's it's mostly we're on our own. Gotcha. Well, this is this is honestly, it's like if you go down the path of buying leads, sometimes it's hard to ever change your business away from that. So I love the encouragement of hunting for your own and building that business that you can count on. Um, and so, never buying a lead again is kind of a, a polarizing topic matter in the real estate world because many people are kind of handcuffed by the spends to continue to keep the the ball rolling for their business. So what does that mean? It means natural leads. It means relational. Instead of thinking transactionally, we're thinking relational. This is a diff- big paradigm shift for people in the sphere production game versus the you know, converting purchased leads game. And then it's systematic. How do, you, how do you do the same things each week, even if they're boring? Mastery is boring. So how do you create systems that you just kind of Hey, it's on my calendar. This is what I do each week. And when I do this, when I do these things, what happens? Fruit drops off the tree for me and my business continues to, to be sustained, to sustain and to thrive. Um, and that's through lead generation. We're going to talk a lot about lead generation versus lead management. And I'll get into that a little later, but those are two different things. And for us to take inventory, if you get one thing away from today, take inventory on are you lead generating, which is generation is creating something new that you haven't had before, or are you managing previous leads that you already have, that you're already familiar with, that that you're already showing or talking to? You can lead generate from leads you already have, of course, but the conversation switches. And like I said, we'll get into that a little different, a little later, give some examples. So I believe part of why I'm here giving this presentation, which I've given before, is to cure listing agent and buyer agent poverty. And this is kind of a joke because this is what happens in our world, you guys. We have opportunity with limitless ceilings and we have good months. And then listing agents and buyer agents seem to ride this roller coaster of like, hey, we did good. And then the months kind of dwindled down at the end of the year. And it's like, oh, we don't have any money. We don't have anything sustainable. We don't have continual lead flow. And so we want to have, as entrepreneurs and independent contractors, just as sustainable of a business as people with salaries that work for corporations and all this. We want that sustainability too as entrepreneurs. So we need to not be impoverished six months of the year. We want to create a, a stability and reliability. And how do we do that? We master our sphere. This is our answer. This is how we, when we become masters of our SOI, as you kind of use that term, I'm glad you guys use the same term. We become masters of our sphere of influence. We know that we have people in our corner that are constantly using us for their own real estate needs and referring us out for, and in ta- you know, being loud about our business to other people and advocates for our business as well. So no more sales roller coaster. This is a world where we're not doing the high, the closings one month and then no closings the next. Consistently high income. We're paying off debt with this income. We're get, making sure our taxes are paid. We're pre-funding vacations that we can take because we have this lifestyle. 
We can purchase assets, aka rental properties, income producing assets that create another stream pouring into the income bucket. We have the lifestyle we want. We have freedom when we can create these things. So it's it's of primary importance um, that we run our businesses like a business um, with systems like this. So real quick, this is my plug because I actually wrote a book on this. Master Your Sphere is a book. And it, the reason I wrote the book is because I just wanted it a paper version, like an outline, almost like a game plan of everything I'm talking about today. So if you or any of your team members would like a lot of this, and I use a lot of examples in the book, check out MasterYourSphere.com, get the book. Uh, you know, like I said, for some people buy it for team members or, or other things. And then there's actually also some online courses that we have at the Hatch Coaching site that it's hosted on um, for you to check out as well. But just some resources, wanted to put that out there if you're interested in, in a new read. Um, so let's get into it. This is my table. This is the beautiful uh, outline of what we're going to be talking about today. This is a 135 or a GPS. You've maybe seen this in the real estate world. Very common tool for accomplishing anything. I have GPSs or 135s for planning a vacation or where my daughter's going to go to school. What are what's the main goal? What are the three priorities and what are the strategies to do it? You know, so we do 135s all the time. And it's simply a main goal can be kind of ambiguous, but what are you going for? What are the priorities to get you there? And what's what are the strategies that can help achieve each priority? So you guys kind of get the lay of the land. And the main goal here is a strong, reliable business that we create from our own SOI. I think you've heard me beat that horse dead already. Um, and so that's our main goal. And here's where I want to jump into lead generation versus lead management. Because in our world, as real estate people, the easier route to go is to manage the current leads we have. That's that's actually enjoyable. That's just fostering conversations with people that we already know. The, the goal in creating sustainability in our business is going to be lead generation, which is giving yourself time each week to create new. And so an example is, this is this has just happened this week. This was, I checked in with my top one of my top referral partners, which is a lender in the area, he works with for Fairway Mortgage. Great guy. Said, "Hey, how you doing? Checking in, you know, um, seeing how his business is going, seeing how his kids are doing. I'm pouring into a great person. We just had a great interaction. I was just kind of authentically seeing how things are going for him, and it was great. It was great activity. I used that during my Monday morning. Called him up." Most salespeople would say that was really good activity. But the problem was that was during the 30 minutes that I had for lead generation time. And the conversation that I had with him was managing a current vendor that has been a really great referral source, which some could say, man, that's a great thing to do. Well, that, that is a great thing to do when you're doing lead management time, because that's when you call your people, your rock stars, your past clients, your people that you've worked with and just pour value into their life and, and continue to build deep in that relationship. The way that I could have switched that conversation in order to obey my time on my calendar for lead generation would be, hey, Gabe, um, just so you know, I'm just I'm, I'm right in the middle of my lead generation uh, allotted time this morning. I have about 30 minutes and I'm calling you just to see if you've had any pre-approvals cross your desk in the last 10 days. Anybody that's looking that's not represented, uh, I'd love to connect with them and, and go through the process of home buying with them if, the, if, uh, if they haven't had that opportunity already. Question mark done. You understand that that conversation was going to someone I trust, but it was all based on him having the possible response of, oh yeah, I just met um, Allison Smith and her and her husband are moving to town and they're going to work at the hospital. And they said they don't have a realtor. They're looking for someone they can rely on. Can I connect you? What did we just do there? We generated a lead because we switched the conversation. So just understand, I'm going to talk about this lead generation versus lead management. It's so common for me to go into my lead generation time and then slip into lead management time. All right. Jake is, is, is a guy on our team that's at our lead generation sessions all the time. And how hard is it, Jake, for us? Maybe I'll let you speak to it a little bit. How hard is it not to just kind of pour more 
value and, and pour more energy into your current leads rather than trying to create new, right? Yeah, like that was such a big challenge for me, especially starting out was I want to just talk to people that I've already spoken with the week before and just check in and see how they're doing. And and because that's easy. You already have that relationship built. So it's it is um, it can be scary at times to try to reach out to somebody new that you just maybe met for the first time and you now need to start forming that relationship. And uh, once you do it, I've already found, you know, once you do it for a while, it gets so much more comfortable. You become so much more comfortable doing it. Um, but it takes practice just like anything. And that's something I'm learning too. Thanks Jake. Yeah, that's absolutely it. It's there's, it's not about not doing lead management. Don't hear that, but it's about the 30 minutes on Monday at 9am when our team does lead generation, we have to turn the conversation to lead generation. Then lead management happens after that lead management can be a, something you have on your calendar for later that day or each day for that matter. But lead generation is different. So always, I'm just always going to make that differentiation. I think you guys get it. So the first priority of a strong business from SOI happens to be lead generation. Okay. You guys maybe felt that, that uh, lead up there. So what are the strategies we can use or that we've been using on our team to lead generate? Number one strategy, and we've actually taken this down to two different sessions a lot of times a week, but, but the general thing is one hour of lead generation. Um, and it says a day, but we actually do it once a week. But for people that are coming, really building up their business, um, doing this multiple times a week is, is, a, is an amazing thing. The, the important thing there, though, is to not get burnt out by this because you can have a scarcity mindset with lead generation where you're kind of like not looking forward to it. And then you don't want to do it and then you won't do it. Whereas we put this first things first, Monday morning, 9 a.m., we're doing lead generation. And we're, we're, we're actually putting ourselves in a meeting or we're doing a Zoom call. So we're all accountable. We're talking about the conversations we're having saying, hey, I'm reaching out to a lender. Hey, I'm reaching out to an insurance person. Hey, I'm reaching out to a, a person I ran into at the, at the game or the concert this weekend. Um, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to re-engage that conversation or see if they know anybody or that anybody they're working with that is looking to buy. You know, just to jump back into how these conversations get switched, you guys. Let's say you run into an open house lead and you have a great conversation with an open house lead and you get their contact information, but they said they're, rep they're, they're represented you know, by a real estate agent. That doesn't have to be dead there. A, real, a lead generation conversation could be reaching out to that person on Monday morning and saying, hey, I know you're working with an agent. It sounds like they're doing a great job for you. I'm wondering do you have anybody else looking for a similar house? Do you have any friends or family moving to town that are looking for a house like you are? I know you said mentioned you had a sister that worked in town or something like that. Lead generation. You're trying to get a new name, someone to add to your database. The perfect method that we, we use a lot is the hopscotch method of, I, I reach out to a lot of people that I trust that, that are people in my world. And I'm constantly asking if they have anybody that are interested in going through the home buyer the the home buying process that they're that are they're working with? I constantly am asking uh, you know friends that work at the local hospital if they've had anybody that's new that's coming on board that is renting and they're curious about the home buying process. And every now and then somebody will be like, "Oh yeah, we just had a really great new hire and they're going to rent for a while, but they've been kicking around buying a home." Boom, you know, it's going to your rock star past clients and people that you've served well already and saying, Hey, you know, I'm right in the middle of my morning lead generation. It's Monday morning. We're just trying to get a couple of people that um, are curious about what it takes to be pre-approved. You know, has anybody, you know, has anybody kicked around the idea of, of getting a pre-approved for home buying, you know, trying to spark that what's the ask instead of saying, Hey, anybody know anybody trying to buy or sell a house? You know, prompt those people in a generation mindset, lead generation mindset to come up with a name, pass it along. And then we, we do that for 30, 45 minutes. And then we review how it went and we're, we're creating. That's what's happening. We're creating during that session. So having that on your calendar is a huge, important strategy for accomplishing lead generation. Open houses. Okay. This is probably obvious, you guys. This is a huge part of our game. Jake just came off of the parade of homes in our area. 
And he's currently working four leads that he got, that he generated at the Parade of Homes open house this weekend. You guys, in our industry, I just want to put fresh perspective on this because this can be a big open houses can be kind of a drag because they're on the Sunday, Saturday, Sundays, the weekend, and they take a lot of time. But we work in an industry where we can go to a house, a nice house. Sit inside of it, and people, home buyers, come to us. Generally, they're coming. Literally, literal leads are coming to us. That not being a part of your strategy in a consistent form is a mistake because it's not about you. It's not about them. It's generally about being at the right place at the right time, and you're going to be that person that opens the door of, "Hey, are you curious about the process? Hey, are you looking in the area? Here's another house similar to this one." And showing value and having a good first impression, and boom, you're now in relationship with this person, and you've created the lead that you're that you're actively working just by being in a place. So I don't have to sell you on open houses. This is, but 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 adding this to your tool belt of lead generation tactics as a as a rev as a lead source in your business this year is so important. I I love setting the goal each year of saying. As part of my business, my SOI business this year, I'm gonna have four leads come from open houses. It's just a that's a that's a low bar, but think of that. That's one lead source for me that I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have four leads from open houses. When am I gonna do when am I gonna do the open houses? Where am I gonna get them? You know, how is that gonna progress for me? That's one a quarter. And so that can be a source of, of leads for you. Lead generation t- strategy number three is the rule I describe in the book called the never eat alone strategy. We all are eating lunches. We're all drinking coffee. We're all going out for a celebratory or a happy hour drink. Why? You know, these are moments where we can pour in deep into relationships with people. And early in my career, when I was trying to create an SOI business, I had usually three to five coffees, lunches, or happy hours on my calendar every week. And you have to, you have to plan to get to that point. Even having two a week is tough if you're not scheduling them out for the future. But when you get to a point where you're constantly interacting with people and you come from a place of value, the rule on our team is when you go out to lunch or coffee or happy hour with someone, you're not the first one to bring up real estate. We're not there to sell them. We're not there to act like we're interested in their life. And then at the end, be like, so you want to buy a house? It's like, that's the, that's, that's ugly, you know? And so we're all about pouring value into these things, making connections, checking in on where people are at in their careers, their lives, and asking those questions generally creates reciprocity for them to be interested in what you you've got going on. And that's the moment where we get to say, you know, we're really excited. The market's been hot. Uh, We just helped a client last week, you know, in a multiple offer situation, um, and we're navigating this market with strategy, and, and you know we'd, we're we're actually looking for a few new clients. You know, does anyone anyone you work with right now? You know, that's where you can start to move in some of that language. But uh, this is such good activity. This is this is probably some of the highest ROI activity that I've done. Is spending going to coffee with someone, going to lunch, and having like that happy hour is generally more than forty five minutes. You know, sometimes happy hours go for couple of drinks, you can really gain a lot of great relationship with someone in that time. So that can be one on your arsenal that you can directly correlate lead source uh, people to that lead source of, of pouring in those moments. Lead generation number four, strategy number four is calling into a similar industry. You've already heard me talk about this a little bit, but our top lead sources year after year come from our financial advisor contact, our lender, referral partner lender, our insurance vendor, referring people over. Um, and recently it's been our landscaper, like landscaping guy that's just had some, some people he's worked. This is people in the real estate world. We're talking contractors, handymen, plumbers, inspectors, inspectors buy houses too, lenders, financial advisors. All these people are interacting with the same client demographic that you want. And they have databases of people that you want. 
And this is uh, an amazing relationship to build. This is you, instead of going and finding 30 people that you need to sell a buy or sell a house this year to get your 30 sphere deals done, if that's your goal, you can find five good referral partners that kick you four to six leads a year. And there's your 30. That's called multiplication. And so what we've even done... Um, and Jake's a part, Jake's just has a new one. He's starting. My other team member, Austin, has a referral group. We uh we're all part of referral groups, which are one person from each industry. I'm sure you guys have heard of this, but uh one person from like a chiropractor to um a hair salon owner to a handyman to a landscaper to a real estate agent to an insurance, one person and it, it can grow. Um, but one person from each industry comes and you you see how you can build each other's businesses through referral networking. And that is so much power. For so many years, my referral group had been my number one lead source. And so you guys, lean into strategy number four. These are conversations you need to be having. We have the build your your team list where we have like a bunch of different vocations in our area. And if you don't know someone, A, know someone at all in, in those industry areas, and then B, know them very well that you're creating great relationship with them. You're missing out. You're missing out. You can be their preferred real estate professional and they can be your preferred whatever they do. You know, it's an amazing B2B relationship. Um, and this has consistently been one of our top lead sources year after year. Um, so I would say that and past client referrals. Boom. Those two have always been really high on the list. And then the last strategy is one mover per day. This is kind of an interesting database tactic of. Each day, I want to try to progress someone along the path in my world. We talk a lot about helping people um, gain access to the MLS, and we talk a lot about introducing people to lenders for pre-approval if they're kicking around this idea. That would be helping someone take a next step. That's what a mover is. And so when, whenever we're interacting with someone that's like, oh, I sure don't know what this home buying process is all about. Well, have you talked to a lender at all? Or how are you viewing properties? You know how are how are you uh, how are you looking at homes right now? Well, I've kind of been playing around on Realtor.com and Zillow. Um, do you have access to the MLS? You know, for someone to say no, what's that? And then you're saying, well, you know, we can provide portal access to the MLS for our clients, and you're able to then give them that access, show that value. This is what we call helping someone that was in the curiosity bubble move into okay, now I have a proper way to look at. Look at houses from the from the best source. Oh wait, what's next after that? Well, you know, pre-approvals generally last three to six months. If you're approved, you know, if you're kick, even kicking this around, it might not be a bad conversation or relationship to start forming with a lender. Can I can I do a text conversation intro with the person I trust? This is what we're calling moving people forward. Um, and again, this is this is definitely for people that we're finding or coming across that are very new. And the biggest thing, the biggest pain people are feeling is I don't know what to do next. What are the next steps for me? I want, maybe I've kicked around, my friend bought a house, but what are the next steps for me? Okay. I want an accountability piece for each priority here, gang. And for this accountability piece that we go over is email templates. You can actually download an extension on, if you're a Gmail user, I'm sure Outlook has the same thing where you can send yourself emails in the future or even repeat emails. And what we've practiced a lot with holding ourselves accountable <clears throat> is an email that hits our inbox that says, hey, did you do your lead generation session this week? Hey, do you have an open house schedule for Sunday? Hey, how many lunches do you have on your calendar? And we're, really all, we're all really good at responding to emails because we do it all day long. And so generally, if you get an email from yourself and there's some simple questions, you'll actually respond to it. And this is a great way to collect your own stats, hold yourself accountable. And if you haven't done any of that and that email pings you at on Tuesday afternoon, you're like, oh, yeah, we got to get stuff on the calendar. We got to do that. So we use an email template to hold ourselves accountable. And I think accountability is necessary for all of these things we're, we're talking about here. So, okay. Priority number one in the books. Let's keep moving. Number two priority is pipeline. You guys, this deserves its own column. This is one of the biggest things we focus on. I see Jake's head nodding. I always say that 
the quote, how are you going to sell 10 houses if you don't have a, you can't see your next 10 people you're going to sell a house to? If you haven't seen them, seen them, poured value into them. If you don't have a list of your next 10 sales, what, what's your expectation? That they're just going to pop out of thin air? You know, sometimes that actually works for real estate agents. And it's super frustrating to me because it's, it's not a system. It's just a whimsical, it's, it's going to go with the, the year. You know, but if you have a pipeline of the next 10 people you're serving, that's your focus. And that's how you create sustainability, gang. So pipeline is our next priority. Our rule is 10 buyer pipeline. At all times, you have a 10 buyer pipeline. If you go and have a great week and you sell three of them, well, then you have three, three slots to fill and you better have that filled, which goes into number two, names are always filled. Name slots are always filled. Sometimes, and Jake can attest to this, sometimes you don't know who your next 10 people are. You're like, well, two of them dropped off and I sold two of them. And you know this, sometimes we just put open house lead number one filled in. We're, per, we're, we're, we're have, we have vision for a lead coming from the open house this week or past client referral number one, past client referral number two. I'm going to get two referrals from my past clients to fill my pipeline. And I'm going to make intentional asks this week to get names to be filled in. A lot of new agents, when Jake started, he had to just fill in people that he hadn't even talked to yet. But that was the beginning of his pipeline. And then you can prune your pipeline and pour value into your pipeline and help them, your pipeline move to the next steps to the point where Jake will get a pipeline where his top four people are all pre-approved with MLS access, actively looking at houses. And you can't tell me that he's not going to sell four houses really soon if he's if his pipeline is looking like that. Okay, so this pipeline is such an important piece of what we do. And here's the one caveat that we talk about, and this can get kind of funky. We have a rule that you have to have a way to have your pipeline with you at all times. Now, with my time at Hatch, some of my team members would put sticky notes on the dashboard of their cars on their steering wheel with their pipeline, which can get a little iffy if someone jumps in your car and they're like, why, why is my name on that sticky note? But um, this was just the concept of having view, being able to view it. If it's hidden on your computer in a spreadsheet that you don't open, it's not with you. It's not on your mind. And so a big one that we do is I use sticky notes on my phone. You probably can't see, but on the back screen of my phone, I have little widgets that have sticky notes with names on them. And I can scroll past and say, oh, here's my pipeline. Here's my pipeline of people. Um, I carry this legal pad with me a lot. A lot of times what we do during our lead generation sessions or our script and role play sessions is we write out our pipeline. Hey, everybody number, number one to 10, write out your pipeline right now. And sometimes you got to pull it up where you have it on your phone, whatever, but you're, you're writing it out. It's there. There's your people. Sometimes people are shifting. Sometimes number five moves to number two and you're moving people up and down. Number four strategy on your pipeline is adding to your database daily because when your pipeline goes dry, where do you, where do you fill in the, the voids from your database? Okay. And I have a love, really, love hate relationship with databases because as salespeople, Remember, I was from engineering, no sales training. They're like, hey, here's your login for your database. And I'm like, great. This is where you keep all your clients. And boy, did that database get dusty fast. And by, what I mean by that is it didn't get opened up. And it just kind of went in there. I put some names in there one time and never did anything else. Okay, number five strategy, which kind of goes with number four, is greatness in sales and people with str the strongest businesses have squeaky clean CRMs or databases. They have people with updated contact information. They have people with updated notes, with tasks that are scheduled, with where they're at in the process, with ratings A, B, C, and D based on how soon they are. You guys... This can get to be tedious, but it's such an important piece that ties into having a strong pipeline. So my encouragement to you is as part of this strategy, add one person to your database each week. That's 52 people a year. That's not a, that's not a big ask. One person a week. One new person. It could be, sometimes I've typed in like Jerry from basketball team. I don't know his last name yet. I don't even have his contact information, but I'm going to create a task for my next step with Jerry to get his contact information or get his last name, find him on Facebook or something, you know, but I, I just want to create simplicity 
and I have a new person that I've added, and I have a next step for that person. If you get into that habit and you build that skill, it starts to pile up. And when you get into greatness and having a clean CRM, it's you scheduling one hour a week, one hour a week, schedule it in your calendar to say, hey, I'm going to spend time in my CRM. You can put clean CRM. And cleaning, by the way, doesn't always mean adding to and, and making it more complicated. Sometimes it's deleting deleting people out that are no goes. Like prune that prune that rose bush so it can grow. Get the get the the fluff out of there. You know, and sometimes sometimes it's kind of tough to clean my CRM because I'm adding like notes where like, oh, they bought with a different person. You know, but that's not dead to me. That's just a task to follow up with them six to nine months later to see, hey, how's the house treating you guys? You know, do you want an updated value? We're doing updated values on houses. I commonly treat clients that have already bought a house with someone else like they're my own clients, my own sphere of influence, because it's very common that their realtor isn't treating them like a past client should be treated. And I'm not trying to jump into other people's businesses and and, and rub people the wrong way. I'm just people that I know, I'm always giving them the same value that I'm giving my own my own crew of people because I feel like we treat our people the best. You know, we're constantly doing market evaluation updates. We're constantly inviting them to events. We're constantly inviting them to home buyer classes or people they know. We're adding value to them, adding value. And so that person instead of pruning them out of my rose bush in my CRM, I might put a note in there to wish them happy birthday or check in on how their kids are doing, you know, simple stuff. Clean databases lead to a constantly filled pipeline. The accountability piece with the pipeline strategy priority, you guys, is every Monday when we do our script and role play, we generally are talking about our pipelines or we're, or like I said, we're listing this out. For your team and you to start to know each other's pipelines is a very strong thing. Because you start to see the names on other people's pipelines and you start to be like, hey, you know, that person's been there a while. What are your next steps with that person? You know, or how many people on your list right now are pre approved? And some people will have six and some people will have one. And that just goes to the health of your pipeline. So reviewing this with te- at a team meeting, it's, it's five minutes, it's real quick, especially if you obey the rules and you have it with you at all times. It's, hey, let's pull out our pipelines. And then it's great to review this stuff. Okay. Priority number two is done. Priority number three is habits, you guys. This goes directly into a quote. Jake's heard me say this way too many times. But I learned it early in my real estate career, and it served me so well. This is the advice I have for anybody in sales. Your business will never exceed the success, your success of your business will never exceed the success you have as a, as a person. Okay. My business started to thrive when I got rid of some of my bad habits. My business started to thrive when I started pouring into my marriage and my relationship more. When I started taking ownership of that, being a really great husband. My business started to thrive when I, when I created a 90-day health goal. I made more sales during that 90 days because I was up early. I was drinking water because I had a a diligent habit. I happened to get after the day earlier because I had this other thing going on in my life. The habits in your life and the success of you as a person will directly correlate to the success of your business. Some people don't have any, they're not really doing great as human and they have great businesses, but those businesses are built on sand from my experience and they falter and they're, and they're unreliable. But if you're continuing to kind of raise that, the, the rising tide of your habits will raise the ships in, in, uh, in your sales world. And so habits here for strategies, you guys, is simple morning things. Very simple. I'm asking you to spend 10 minutes in every morning, popping open your pipeline. It's on the back screen of your phone or on your, on your notebook that you wrote down yesterday and looking at it, reviewing it. Mm, any changes? 10 minutes. It's just looking at the people that you're going to sell next. Not looking at people as sales. Don't, don't uh, take me take that the wrong way. It's looking at the people that you're pouring value into that you can serve as clients because that's what we do. And I argue that would you rather have your the people in your world work? They're going to work with someone because housing is a need. Would you rather have them working with you or someone else that's not as 
focused in and uh, honed in as you, you and your team. So 10 minutes with your pipeline each day, 10 minutes of exercise. I'm saying 10 minutes. I'm saying go on a walk, commit to a walk. Right now, we just had a baby. I can't go to the gym. I'm not, do, I'm not doing I'm staying home a lot to be with our, our little one. My commitment to exercise right now is 25 push-ups. And I've been doing 25 push-ups every day. I do it in funny at funny times, right in the middle of dinner. And my daughter will kind of jump down and start trying to do push-ups with me. But it's 25 push-ups a day. And it's just a commitment. It creates momentum in my life. Makes me feel good. Simple, simple, simple. But it's a habit that I want. And I'm not about, my goal isn't the end result of having big muscles from exercise or being really in shape. My goal is to be a very consistent person because I want consistency in my life. And so it's a consistency focus, not the actual thing. Hopefully that, that hits. 10 minutes of lead generation prep. Okay. This is, it says 10 minutes of lead gen. It's actually 10 minutes of lead generation prep. This is where each morning when you get up or when your mind's clear and you're like, okay, what's the day got? You just have whatever names are in your head, whatever interactions you had yesterday, you just sit there for a little bit and be like, oh yeah, I had a, I ran into that person at lunch. I should follow up with them. Okay. Jared, boom, done. Oh yeah. Haley's sister said she wanted, um, they're curious about their home value. She just said that random conversation. It popped in my mind. I just take the things out of my mind, put them down. And especially if you're like, Hey, Jake came off the parade of homes. If he's on Monday, he's like, man, I have a lot of parade to homes leads. Like, uh, I'm going to write down the top three people that I had thought I had great conversations with, you know, write them down, write them down. You're just kind of making a little prep list, a little battle plan for when you get into your lead generation session later that day or that week. So when you get into lead generation, you can jump right in and you'd be like, oh man, I got my first five contacts right here. Cause I've been doing that in the morning. Quick little exercise. The other exercise that I do that I think is an absolute superpower that you hear everybody say, but it's a reading habit. And again, this is not about reading a hundred books a year. This is about having a reading habit. Do you want to say you're the type of person that has a reading habit or a type of person that says, I read all these books. No, all I want is the reading habit. And so what I've done is I cap it. I do it the opposite way. I don't say I have to read a minimum of 10 pages or 10 minutes a day. I say, I only read 10 pages a day maximum. That's it. I can't read 11. I want to leave meat on the bone. So I'm excited to read my 10 tomorrow. If I get into a really good part and I have to stop because of my rule, it's great because I have an abundant mindset walking into reading tomorrow. And I get up in the morning and I'm like, let's keep going wherever I left off instead of the, oh, I got to read a whole chapter like school makes you think, you know? And so 10 minutes of reading cap it or 10 pages and then stop. And the fact is, if you read 10 pages a day for 30 days, you pretty much crush a book every month because that's about 300 pages, okay? And it's, it changes the whole paradigm of thought with, the, with that habit. And, and reading is, like I said, a superpower that the only places where you're going to find self-discovery that move your business massively forward and you're going to avoid mistakes is when you're in the pages of a book or learning from someone else, or like I said, having self-discovery while you're reading, these are the moments when you move forward as a person and where your business might move forward too. So you have to give yourself that time. Okay. Strategy number four. Strategy number five, we all are doing this for a reason. And to revisit your big plan or your big why, or what your vision is for this year each day, is so powerful. And so we incorporate this into our habits. It's going over what goals you have for the year, do it, giving yourself 10 minutes to just review like, oh, I want to buy a Tesla this year. It's like one guy on our team actually has that as his goal. Like he said, he's been working and saving to buy a Tesla. Again, we don't want to use commission to go and buy all the, all the Rolexes in the world, but at the same time, he's working for this. This is motivating to him. Oh, I want to pay off debt this year. I want to pay off X amount of debt this year. I want to pay off ten thousands of debt, ten thousand dollars of debt by September first this year. You know, getting specific with it. Okay, are we on track there? Well, it doesn't matter. We're just writing down what our big plan is. Hey, I want to create an extra fifteen thousand dollars in income this year. You know, 
I'm writing these things down. I'm going over my big plan. Maybe you're adding to it. Maybe you're deleting some things because you're in different seasons as the year goes through. 10 minutes towards your big plan. Such a powerful thing. And the way we track this accountability is usually a habit tracker. Um, spreadsheets are great, but again, sometimes they get buried and they get dusty. So I've used an app called Streaks on my phone. Streaks is an amazing app that just lets you see if you're doing the things that matter. As you can see, there's five things here. You can see how many days you've done it in a row. And once you do five, seven, 10 days in a row of this, you guys, you start to feel momentum and it is underrated what momentum can do in your business. And it's also not talked about when you don't have momentum, how hard it is to do your job because you're in a, you're in a different mindset and it's not hard to create momentum. It's not as hard as people think, but when you're feeling like, Oh, when's, where's the next lead going to come from? And this is really hard. And I'm not, I don't have a closing for a while. This is where you've, you've lost your ball stops rolling. And this, these habits are things to continue momentum in your life. So you created in, in a lot of different pockets. Okay. There's the last visual gang. If you want to take a picture or anything like that, like I said, this is recorded. We have some people that want the recording. So take a picture. So you, this is the final image of that. If you want all of the beauty there. Okay. Some quotes just real quick, because I'm a big quote guy. Uh, there's a supreme difference between transactional real estate and relational real estate. I've done both. The biggest pain in my world has come from transactional real estate. That people treat me like a transaction or even I treat them like a transaction. This game is about relationships and that's such a rewarding place to be when it gets there. And that goes to the middle quote. We do a lot of one night stands and lead generation and not enough long-term relationships. Um, Tim McCall is on here a couple of times. He's my real estate coach. Um, he also... Uh, has said, folk, what you focus on expands, be selective with your focus areas. Okay. So what you're spending your time on, what's coming in your eyeballs and in your ear holes is going to continue to expand on what your, where your mind is, how your mind is thinking subconsciously. Uh, one of the leaders that I have in my life is Eric Hatch. If I limit my growth, I limit the growth of everyone around me. This again goes towards that. What I'm saying is as you grow, you guys, everything follows as you grow as a person. Um, dig your well before you're thirsty is such an important thing, I think, for real estate agents to hear because we need to plan so financially diligent, be so financially diligent because of what we have. Our, our incomes can go like this and we can have good years and bad years. And so you need to plan those things. We do that with investing. We plan for consistent residual income, passive income sources to dig our wells before we're thirsty so we don't have a table with one leg, which, which that being commission. And Chaz Wilson um, says, you're only one relationship away from changing your future. This couldn't be more true. I can't tell you how, ma how many relationships that I've created because I'm a real estate person have turned into business partnerships, mentorships, introduced me to other people. You guys, this is the best part of what we do. Nobody knows it, but this is the best job in the world because of that right there. Each relationship can change your whole future. Um, as you're as you're diving deep, and we always say deeper, not wider, uh, with relationships. Resources for you guys, and then I'm going to cap this off. I'm doing pretty good on time. Wow, we went, we kept going. So again, my book, the courses, again, MasterYourSphere.com. If you want the literal game plan in the pages, I have a lot of notes, spots, a lot of examples in here. Definitely a supplement to everything we talked about today. Real brokerage is, again, the technology-based broker that we're a part of that we switched to in August. And this is kind of a new brokerage in, in, the, in the world, the nation. Um, and again, it's publicly traded. The, symbol, the ticker is REAX. The biggest reason we made the move to real was because we get ownership via it's publicly traded. We get ownership every time we sell. The duplication of all, all of my agents are eventually um, growing up to be very great at what they do so they can serve clients well. And then they're going to start their own teams and help other people start their own teams. And they are all tied together in Reels Network. And I think there's so much power there. And there's actually revenue share when it comes to that too. And that kind of goes into the passive income. And those are the three reasons why we made the switch. Um, and then as a supplement, the technology-based broker 
I think is the future of the real estate agent. And so it's been really something that we've explored. Um, and if you're, if you're curious about real at all, because it is a new thing and you maybe had never heard of it, let's chat. I can go into more detail. I have a lot of numbers and stuff like that, but definitely open to that conversation. Um, if this is the first time you're hearing about real and again, thank you so much for letting me yap at you for this last hour. I've, I always enjoy doing this again, follow me on social media. I really hope to kind of create new friends through this with you, with Kim and Amy here. Um, and then if we, if you want to chat more about our business or what we're doing, even with investing, we do a lot with passive income. That's actually the sign behind me is passive 25 K group where we're completely focused on passive income. Um, let's chat. My link tree is right there. It has a, a little button for scheduling a zoom call or a coffee, which you guys are in different spots, but I'd love to continue the conversation. And I can't tell you how much Jake and I appreciate you guys jumping on. Um, and anybody that's listening to the recording too, just taking your time to watch this presentation. So I hope it was valuable. Hope there was some nuggets there. Um, and again, we're going to cap it right at an hour so you can get back to your, your lives. So thank you guys.